Hello students, this is Dr. Dakshayani, Assistant Professor in Zoology from Maharani Science College for Women, Bengaluru. Today, I am going to deliver a lecture on general characters and classification of amphibians under paper 3, Chordata. The objectives of learning this topic is to know the exact taxonomical position of class amphibia and to learn the general characters and specialized features of the amphibians and also to understand the classification of living amphibians. Before I could start my class, let us know briefly about the outline classification of subphylum vertebrata under phylum chordata and on what basis the vertebrates have been classified into different classes. As we all know that kingdom animalia is broadly classified into phylum chordata and phylum non chordata based on the presence and absence of notochord which supports the body structure. Phylum chordata includes a wide variety of animals differing from one another in many aspects. But all the chordates possess four diagnostic common characters either at their embryonic stage or at their adult stage. The four characters are presence of notochord, nerve cord, pharyngeal gill slits and tail. Further, phylum chordata is divided into two groups. Group A craniata which means animals without head and are regarded as lower chordates. And Group craniata which means animals with head and they are regarded as higher chordates are modern sorry more advanced chordates. Let us concentrate only on higher chordates that is group craniata in which the notochord is only present in their embryonic stage and later it is replaced by a cartilage or bony vertebral column in the adult forms. The vertebral column is also known as backbone. Hence, the animals which possess vertebral column or backbone are called as vertebrates and they are grouped as subphylum vertebrata under phylum chordata. Vertebrates are also characterized by having muscular system, internal skeletons that allows them to move easily. And all vertebrates have bilateral symmetry, well developed body systems and a central nervous system that controls many functions. These vertebrates are grouped into two superclasses under division Nathostomata, which comprises jaw-bearing vertebrates, which vary in structure, life cycle and behavior. The two superclasses are the superclass Pisces, which exclusively comprises fishes that live in water, breathe through gills, skin covered by scales and fins as their locomotor organs. They are cold-blooded animals. The other superclass is tetrapoda which includes limb-bearing vertebrates and they are further classified into four classes. Class Amphibia, they are amphibious 
are transitioned from vertebrates that spend part of their life in water and part on land which breathe through both gills and lungs and they are also cold blooded animals class reptilia they completely adapted for terrestrial mode of life skin is covered by scales and they are also cold blooded animals class aves which exclusively includes birds and are only vertebrates that have feathers and they are warm blooded animals the last class is class mammalia they are also warm blooded animals and they are the only vertebrates which possess mammary glands for nourishing young ones with this brief introduction let us learn more about amphibians the first group of terrestrial animals that partly moved from aquatic to land the contents of this topic is as follows introduction to amphibians general characteristic features of amphibians and classification of living amphibians up to orders introduction to class amphibia amphibians are small vertebrates they are typically characterized by their incomplete transition form from water to land amphibians are considered to be the first vertebrates to develop legs and move from water to the land the word amphibian is derived from the ancient greek term which means both kinds of life are to have two lives this is so because the natural life cycle of an amphibian requires that it live partly on land and partly in the water amphibians are ectothermic or the cold blooded animals which means they does not maintain constant body temperature the class amphibia includes all tetrapods that is tetrapod vertebrates that are not amniotes which means there is no extra embryonic membranes during the development of embryo they they inhabit a wide variety of habitats and most species living within the terrestrial fossorial arboreal or freshwater aquatic ecosystems obtaining air outside an, an aquatic environment required species to have suited adaptations and this was the case of amphibians many of which contain both gills and lungs for aquatic and above water respiration hence the eng generally undergo metamorphosis from larva with gills to an adult air breathing form with lungs there are many paleontological evidences which proves that amphibians have originated from fishes during the devonian period of paleozoic era and they increased during the carboniferous period hence this period is known as age of amphibians according to roma they say dipnoi fishes are the uncles of amphibians and according to newman both dipnoi and amphibians had the same grandfather which means they had same ancestors this is the systematic position of class amphibia 
and uh, kingdom animalia phylum chordata subphylum vertebrata and superclass tetrapoda coming to the general characteristic features of amphibians amphibians are ectothermic are cold blooded animals that they do not maintain their body temperature through their internal physiological process where their metabolic rate is low and as a result their food and energy requirements are limited the body is divided into distinct head with elongated trunk where neck and tail may or may not be present amphibian skin is smooth highly glandular and is naked that means without scales and it is permeable to water where gas exchange can takes place through the skin which aids in cutaneous respiration and this allows adult amphibians to respire without raising to the surface of water and to hibernate at the bottom of ponds to compensate for their thin and delicate skin amphibians have evolved mucus glands principally on their heads backs and tails in addition most species of amphibian have glandular mucus glands sorry granular glands that secrete poisonous substances which acts as a defensive mechanism the main poison producing glands called the parotid glands produce the neurotoxin bufotoxin and are located behind the ears of toads and these poisonous glands acts as a defensive mechanism in their body in amphibians the buccal cavity is large and has homodont teeth in upper jaw and they have mu- muscular protrusible tongue they have valved nostrils which are connected to buccal cavity to exclude water the specialized structures that are the vocal cords which is present only in males of frogs and toads and they use the vocal cords to give signals during mating in amphibians eyes are large and they are often provided with movable eyelids and they have tear ducts the ears are well developed in amphibians there is no external ear but the large circular eardrum or the tympanum lies on the surface of the head just behind the eye this vibrates and sound is transmitted through a single bone the stapes to the inner ear only high frequency sounds like mating calls are heard in this way most species have ears that can even detect airborne or ground vibrations all amphibians have two pairs of limbs except for the limbless amphibians and a few species of salamanders have reduced or no limbs at all the four limbs are provided with four clawless digits and the hind limbs are provided with five clawless digits where the hind limbs are larger than the four limbs especially in those species that principally move by jumping or swimming example frog the limbs have adaptations for the way of life 
with webbing between the toes for swimming, broad adhesive.